Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and I want to talk to you today about community biodiversity. Now, though this is a discussion of community ecology, really biodiversity sort of falls under the category of conservation biology. It's conservation biologists that are always interested in preserving as much biodiversity as possible. And so it sort of crosses over between those two disciplines. And so this is a really just a, br a brief look at community biodiversity. And one of the things that you want to consider when you're looking at biodiversity is the abundance and number of species. And what I mean by that is that when you look at species richness, that particular term there, it's really just the total number of species in the community. So in other words, if you go into an area and you count it up and you're like, okay, there's one, two, 15 different species. How do you determine a species? This is a good question. I mean, you might, you know, need some background in this. You could, you could bring out some sort of technology that can help you identify that. You could use, go old fashioned and you could use sort of these identification keys called dichotomous keys that help you determine the species. Or you can go um, biotechnology. You can actually take some samples of tissue and actually grind it up and isolate the DNA. And there's some primers that you could actually apply to that DNA and then send it in um, and have it sequenced. And it'll actually determine the, the species. Pretty impressive. It's called DNA barcoding. And so that's kind of a cool thing. And then relative abundance is, you know, when you're considering like the number of organisms that are of that particular species. And so let, let's take a look at this. So imagine, let me give you an example. Imagine two forest communities where there's a hundred trees. Okay. So what's interesting about this is you can look at this and think, well, these two communities, community one and two, you're like, wow, they both have four species. They must be very similar. Well, in fact they do, but in this one, look at this in terms of abundance, each one of these species, A, B, C, and D are 25%, whereas over here, take a look, species A is kind of dominating. So even though the species number is richness is the same, the abundance is different. So one must consider that when looking at uh, community biodiversity. So what are the big trends? Like for, in other words, like if you're traveling, uh, from central America all the way up to the North pole, what would you expect to see in terms of species diversity? Does latitude, in other words, affect species richness, uh, another number of species. And so it might be obvious to you, but the tropical habitats support a vast number of species. And you know that the tropical rainforest is infamous for having the most biodiversity. In other words, the greatest species richness, but why so much, why not so much in the temperate and very few in the polar regions? Like, so in other words, here is where we find lots of biodiversity, right? In this area, lots of biodiversity. So this is the peak of biodiversity, but then it gets less and less and less and less as you go in this direction to the poles. And likewise, it, it becomes less and less and less when you go in the southern as well. Now, what is that? You might, well, it might have something to do with climate. And if you guess that, I think you might be right. So it has to do with the fact that, you know, again, down here in the tropical region, right here, close to the equator, there's tremendous species diversity. And then as you move in, northern latitudes, it becomes less and less and less. And there's a, a couple of factors there. If you really think about it, it's like these polar regions up here, they may have had just more disturbances. In other words, more glaciers that have come and sort of wiped out species diversity. In other words, the, these communities had to start over again. But more importantly, it might just be something as simple as there's less solar radiation up here. And there's a lot more sun hitting here in the equator. So more sun, more energy, more water down here. So there's more water and more sun. And this is generally what provides the impetus for uh, primary productivity, which powers the whole food chain. So up here, it's a little colder and again, lacking in, in uh, and also the fact that decomposition decomposers 
aren't working as quickly, again, related to the temperature. So the nutrient recycling is a little bit slower. Here's a little bit faster. So when you consider species richness relative to the geographic size of an area, so take a look at this. So as area increases, this may seem obvious to you, but as area increases, there's a greater number of species diversity in that particular area. So notice here, this is logarithmic. And so why is this even important to us? Well, in terms of conservation biology, when an area is, is being considered to be developed, in other words, it's being an area is being purchased and there's a discussion about, well, if we're gonna use this much area for housing or what have you, what impact will that have on species loss in the area? Because there's going to be species loss if, you, if you're crowding. And so that's something of consideration. It's relative to the, to the, uh, to the geographic size. Likewise, there's been some interesting studies looking at species diversity on islands. Not only the island size, if the big island or a small island, but you know what's really interesting is the distance from the mainland. And so what, I wonder what you would predict about this. Do you think the larger the island, the more species diverse? And so as it turns out, the size and isolation of an island provides opportunities for studying uh, the biogeographical factors that, is, that affect species diversity uh, in, the, in those communities. And one might imagine the larger the island, the more species, of course. But these are two great uh, ecologists right here, Robert MacArthur and E.O. Wilson. They've, they've developed this hypothesis. So imagine that there's a newly formed island and you're trying to determine the species diversity on that island. Well. Um, that there's two main factors that are influencing that, and which is um, the rate at which new species immigrate to that island and the rate at which uh, species become extinct on that island. And their reach is in equilibrium. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting uh, approach when you're studying communities by looking at species diversity. And we talked a little bit about how islands can affect it and how latitude can affect it we need to consider both species richness and abundance. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief look at, at community biodiversity. Thanks for watching.